This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, as we've had a ton of requests for it, Jonathan is going to be taking a look at the weaponry of the Halo franchise, from the iconic all the way through to the damn right bizarre. So when you go alien, you can go absolutely, completely off the drawing board and do what you want. And this thing, classic Halo weapon, of course. How does it work? Goodness knows. Don't ask me. I just do guns. And this is not a gun. If you want to see Jonathan's take on Halo Infinite, make sure to subscribe as he'll be taking a look at that in a future episode. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to keep an eye out for our upcoming series, Loadout, a show where we take a look at the history and impact of some of the most iconic weapons in gaming, from the M1 Garand and the Desert Eagle through to the minigun and the AK-47. Naturally, Jonathan will be making a fair few appearances over on that show too, so make sure to check that out. Right, let's take a look at Halo. The, the Halo pistol, the Magnum, always struck me as a little odd. I mean, my memory of it is not very Magnum-y. <laughs> uh, it felt like a standard kind of 9mm sidearm, really. Very radical looking appearance with that weird uh, knuckle bow trigger guard on it. Guess you could use that as a knuckle duster. Otherwise, there's really not much point it being on there. It just makes the makes what's supposed to be a compact carry type firearm unnecessarily bulky and difficult to holster, potentially. But this incarnation does more closely resemble what I think the inspiration for the Magnum might have been, which is the uh, Volta P99. It's very far from it, especially that first iteration. This, this version more so. I mean, the red mark on the back of the slide on the real gun, that's the back end of the striker and is the cocked indicator. That's why it's red. On this, it's some sort of, I don't know actually, what, what is on this. And we have a, a textured on safety decocker type thing on the side. The whole thing looks more like a conventional modern pistol. And then in Halo 3 we are back to that bulbous barrel shroud on the front. Really not clear what that's for. It would sort of implies itself to be a housing for a laser sight or something, but I'm not aware of any of that functionality being in the game. <laughs> Okay, so um, ODST is not a game I actually played. I've not seen this incarnation of the pistol before. Almost more subdued and more modern looking. The the trigger guard, the giant trigger guard is played down a little bit. Some sort of laser light module under the barrel, which, you know, this, this doesn't look far off from, from certain modern pistols. And it's meant to be suppressed, very suppressed, because it has the Hollywood pew pew sound. But there's no visible suppressor on there. Now, since this came out, there's the Silencer Co. Maxim 9, which is a very cool looking sci-fi pistol that's real, <laughs> which has a completely contained suppressor system that you can change the length of and all sorts. That has the bulk to compensate for the lack of length, if that makes sense. Here, we've got a very short pistol without the bulk in the front of the gun to accommodate expanding gases and make it quiet. So there must be some kind of sci-fi technology going on here to make it so quiet. Which raises the question, why wouldn't you have that on all of your guns and all the other firearms? And they should all be suppressed integrally, automatically, because why wouldn't you? Other than video game logic, which says that your suppressed bullets hurt less. I would guess the most iconic Halo weapon for most people, the assault rifle. Some may disagree, although that might be partly because of the tangential connection to the FN F2000 assault rifle. Anyone that's seen the F2000 before, which of course is most of the FPS gaming community, they immediately make the connection to this. And in fact, um, in The Art of Halo, the book apparently, the chap in charge of the Halo Bible, the lore around the game, and who was like the go-to guy for the guns of the original game as well, comments on the, the resemblance and said, yeah, he absolutely agrees, it looks very similar. I think similar is fair enough. In this case, absolutely true. He definitely didn't see the F2000 before the uh, assault rifle was designed because this rifle did not debut on the international arms fair circuit until March of 2001. And if you know anything about video game development, you know that the game and most of its weapons would have been there by then because Halo didn't launch until what? Uh, fall of that same year. Now, what also backs up the idea that they're just convergent design is really, it's not that similar. 
to be honest. The general sil silhouette, absolutely. But in detail, you know, the action is conventional on this. It has a, an ejection port, it has a cocking handle mounted on the left side where you might expect it to be. It doesn't have the long cocking handle slot on the front left. The lower profile of the gun is very different. It's close enough that it made the guy responsible, or you know, partly responsible for its design at least, raise his own eyebrow at it. So we have to acknowledge it, but it is not based on the F2000. The thing that's always confused me about the Halo universe, the one thing that stuck out like a sore thumb for me is the use of explicitly 7.62 by 51 NATO ammunition for weapons like the assault rifle. I get a does not compute reaction to that, I'm afraid. The weapons are so visibly different and advanced, and yet we're still using 7.62 NATO. Not only that, it's ex I believe it's ex specifically M118 or M118 special ball 7.62 ammo. And reading that, you might think, oh, it's some hyper-advanced 500 years hence loading of 7.62 NATO. Somehow they've got an amazing new propellant, armor-piercing, sub-caliber projectile, who knows? And they're just using 7.62 as the parent case. No, M118 was developed pretty early on, 60s, as a, a match grade round for snipers to use. So all it is, is more accurate than standard machine gun grade 7.62 by 51. So it's not even a future loading of 7.62, it's like everything else moved on, ammunition technology stayed exactly where, not only stayed where it was, went back in time. This is pretty out there compared to the conventional firearms of Halo. It's also a combination weapon. We have a number of combination weapons in the Royal Armouries collection going back to the 16th century. Um, we have a really bizarre matchlock, wheel lock, gun axe thing. You, if you have a look in our collections database, you'll, you should be able to find that with some of those words. Nothing like this, but a blade combined with a fairly large caliber gun, uh, which is what this is. If we set the blade aside for a moment, the gun part is pretty reminiscent of the 20mm uh, Neopup portable cannon. <laughs> portable automatic cannon, self-loading cannon. And a giant sword. <laughs> Why not? It's a sci-fi franchise. The classic dual wield of the SMGs. If I remember rightly, and from what I'm seeing on screen, these are meant to be caseless, which just makes me all the more confused that we're still using normal present-day ammunition in other guns in the future. The recoil is tremendous on these things. Now, cumulatively, pistol caliber firearms, yeah, of course, they can really push you back if you don't resist them in any way. You know, you'd be pointing at the thing at the sky, as we saw there. But of course, Master Chief is sort of bioengineered and an absolute seven-foot unit. So I would be surprised, like really, you should probably look like Arnie shooting a, an Uzi one-handed or something. It shouldn't really rise at all. Just, just twisting the wrist down should be enough to keep the thing on target. But of course, for gameplay reasons, it's very fast firing. If you don't induce some vertical dispersion, the whole magazine's gonna go on the target and you, you know, you've got a game-winning weapon. The so-called battle rifle. This thing is an anomaly. So we have our we have our assault rifle that's actually firing a battle rifle cartridge, 7.62 NATO, 7.62 by 51 millimeters, and then we have this battle rifle, which we might expect to be firing an even more powerful cartridge. And indeed, the bullet is a higher diameter, larger diameter, 9.5 millimeters. But the case length is only 40 millimeters. So that's substantially less than 7.62 NATO. It's the same case length as the um, 50 caliber handgun round in the game. So that doesn't really make much sense. Unless the term battle rifle and the role of battle rifle is different and in fact the game seems to or the series seems to bear this out because I think most iterations of the battle rifle certainly this one fire in three round burst mode so what we're getting here is if anything lower velocity but a bigger heavier bullet and three of them at once what doesn't really jive with that take that it's maybe like a, a more specialist take on an assault rifle is the fact that it does tend to come with a scope and you do find yourself using it as a DMR as the name would imply a battle rifle so it doesn't 
really fit current doctrine. Why should it? It's 500 years in the future. Of course, when you go um, outside of the human future, if you like, and you start looking at well, either other human cultures or alien cultures, you've got a lot more artistic freedom to come up with you know, what, what might they have developed as a projectile weapon. So this is something very um, unusual. This thing with its twin curved bayonets, effectively, I think you'd, you'd need, you have to sort of justify that in some way, and I guess like a, a warrior culture that is always wanting the ability to hit people in the face with knives is about the only justification for having not one, but two permanently attached bayonets. So when you go alien, you can go absolutely, completely off the drawing board and do what you want, and this thing you know, classic Halo weapon, of course. How does it work? Goodness knows. The, the crystal shard things on top that you, you slot in disappear into the body of the gun and emerge as blobs of energy. I'm sure there's some kind of a cannon or fanon explanation for how the hell that works. Don't ask me. I just do guns. And this is not a gun. I mean, it's a gun in the kind of colloquial sense of a, of a weapon that, that shoots stuff, but it's not a gun in the technical sense of a tube with propellant in it that launches a projectile. It's, it's an energy weapon. Actually, this thing's even weirder than that because you're not putting new crystals in in order to shoot them out as energy. You just kind of give it a shake and they regrow <laughs> and then they shrink back into the gun and shoot out. So I'm not even sure why they need to stick out of the housing of the weapon in the first place. So the closest thing we have today to something like this would be a gun that shoots flechettes. Uh, steel or tungsten darts. You can even get pistol rounds, believe it or not, that shoot tiny little sharp tungsten or steel finned darts. They need some kind of stabilization because they're not going down a rifle barrel, so they usually do have little fins on the back end of them. A bow and arrow has more in common with a flechette shooting gun than this has in common with any of our technology, but insofar as it physically propels a sharp pointy stick, <laughs> at the enemy, it's kind of a form of a flechette. The chamber's charge. Would this bring the cartographer back online? Partially. This type of process... The closest parallel to the Magnum pistol for the humans is the, the Covenant energy pistol. I obviously can't say much very intelligent on how it might work or plausibility of that. I do think it's interesting, other than its charging up ability, um, interesting in the ergonomic sense of it kind of has a foregrip. Now we do we do have for certain fully automatic pistols the option of a foregrip that clips onto the, the dust cover rail. Closest thing we would have to this really. Problem there is you have to kind of push-pull to stabilize the gun. You've got no shoulder stock. This doesn't have a shoulder stock. Two hands are always better than one for, for holding a handgun though, but really you'd be better off holding both hands at the back on the pistol grip, not one at the front. It's, there's gonna be a lot of talk, a lot of waving around. But hey, this is a mainly human <laughs> holding an alien gun. How the hell do you hold it? Who knows? So as if to set me straight on the whole DMR battle rifle quandary, here is the actual DMR, which I'd forgotten even existed. It's a big, chunky, seemingly pretty high caliber thing. It has a strong family resemblance to the assault rifle and the battle rifle. They're all bullpups, all got the charge, cocking handle in the same place. They all have the same kind of manual of arms, which makes sense that you would want to keep that consistent across the whole family. The design has a great big gas tube on the bottom of the barrel, which I think design-wise implies something more powerful. But it also has kind of lending a bit of an LMG appearance, other than the big gas tube and the big muzzle device, is a weird kind of iron sight at the front, which doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me. But yeah, it, it fits the family. Slow firing, powerful, ability to zoom in with the scope. It's just that relationship between the assault and battle rifle that I've never fully clicked with. Okay, I neither remember nor understand this weapon. So this is a this is a saw, so squad automatic weapon. Okay, and that's why it has a large drum type high capacity magazine. And it's a high rate of fire as well. So, you know, ostensibly that's its niche. High volume of fire, it's like an LMG in a in a normal FPS. 
And then you have the practical head scratcher of how the heck the magazine works. It's a spin to unlock by the look of it. There's some sort of lug on the side. You spin it round and it drops out, fine. But then when the player fits a new magazine, he has to spin it to lock it into place, fine. Why doesn't it drop out as soon as he shoves it in though? I would expect you to have to shove it in and rotate it to lock. And that wouldn't be a super efficient way to have a magazine work. Anyway, they've tried to do something different, tried to add something to the kind of canon, but I don't think it's quite as satisfying as the classic weapons. Always a problem when you try and change up the formula though. Now that I think about it, the Halo shotgun has uh, always been a bit weird. It falls into that sci-fi trap of being a pump-action shotgun in the future. And, okay, we still use pump-action shotguns in, in niche military applications, certainly in, in police use still, but self-loading shotguns have become so reliable and affordable, I can't see pumps lasting that much longer for any kind of official use, put it that way. More so than that, the, the technical aspects of how this would work are, a bit, are also a bit confusing. So we have the pump at the bottom, as we normally would. Normally that would wrap around a magazine tube, and this doesn't have a box magazine sticking out of it, but the Halo shotgun is loaded from the top, which is nice and convenient for, for loading and topping off. But how do you get the rounds past the barrel of the gun into the magazine? Or is the magazine on the top and the pump is remotely linked to the magazine tube? And so they're like sandwiching the barrel? That's kind of the only way this can work. In reality, of course, the mechanics just haven't been thought through because why should they be? But I like it when they are. <laughs> I'll get you! Right, I don't, I can't remember what this is called in the in the game. Triple barreled rotary machine gun, or possibly cannon. I'm not actually sure of the caliber either, to be honest. Encountered as a as a turret mounted gun, and of course, being an action game, the player is able to pick them up and use them uh, predator style. Uh, of course, what we, the guy we've got here is an ODST trooper who is not augmented, is not seven feet tall. Could he do this? I, Maybe there's some recoil, like super recoil buffer in there, I don't know. Um, if there is, I would expect that technology to be applied to the rifles as well and them to have zero recoil. I think we're just fudging it action movie style, to be honest. First strike! Double kill! <laughs> Double kill! <laughs> Quite a cool, massive space rocket launcher with spinning barrel type tube launcher things and a big drum type magazine slash clip slash feed device thing. But I don't quite understand what's going on because it looks like the top barrel is firing a rocket, shooting a rocket, and then the barrel cluster of two, one barrel offset, is then doing a full 360 spin back to where it started and then firing the next one. So unless what looks like a second barrel is actually some other part of the weapon, it's actually single barrel feeding from the magazine. Don't really get this one. If anyone understands how this is supposed to work, please let me know. Right, so this is actually quite plausible for a present day anti-materiel rifle. The 14.5 millimeter cartridge is um, a Russian designed, very large caliber round, obviously. So that that be caliber still being in use in the in this this round of future makes more sense actually, because I really quite hard to top that with conventional technology. It's uh, self-loading, so it's not not hobbled by being uh, straight pull bolt action or something. Plausible looking design. Um, I don't imagine that we ever use the bipod with it though. The scope does have the air of being something sci-fi and futuristic. Don't think it has any real functionality beyond a beyond a modern scope though. As always, have a look in the description for links to Royal Armouries um, site. We've got our own YouTube channel. If you haven't found me over there, you might be interested to go and have a look at that. We have ways that you can donate and support us and what we do here at the museum. But most of all, I hope to see you next week.